टुडे आई विल स्पीक ऑन एंड्रू मार्वल्स पोएम टू हिज कॉय मिस्ट्रेस ओके सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट विद द पोएम आई वुड लाइक टू स्पीक अबाउट स्पीक सम लाइन्स अबाउट एंड्रू मार्वल एंड्रू मार्वल वॉज एन इंग्लिश मेटाफिजिकल पोएट पार्लियामेंट्रियन एंड the son of a church of england clergyman or who was also named as uh, andrew marvel as a metaphysical poet uh, he is associated with john dun and george herbert he was a colleague and friend of john milton andrew marvel was born on 31st march 1621 and died on 16th august 1678 okay so what is a metaphysical what do you mean by metaphysical okay so metaphysical meta actually means beyond okay so physical means physical realm physical world so metaphysical poetry is that kind of poetry which is which consists of metaphysical concepts okay what is concept what do you mean by concept concepts means surprising images okay so metaphysical poetry will consist of metaphysical concepts c o n c e i t and uh, and therefore metaphysical means beyond the physical so beyond the physical surprising images those poetry which will have beyond the physical realm beyond the physical images surprising images in, in the kind of poet poetry that that kind of poetry will be called metaphysical poetry okay i will tell it again those poetry which will have the metaphysical concepts that is beyond the physical surprising images in in its Uh, uh lines in its words those poetry are called metaphysical poetry okay so uh, you have heard of john don john don was the first poet who wrote metaphysical poetry okay so let us talk today about uh, andrew marvel um andrew marvel's uh, most famous poems include uh to his coy mistress the garden and horatian ode upon uh, cromwell's return from ireland and the country house poem that is upon appleton house clear marvel's first poems which uh, were written in latin and greek and um, published when he was still at cambridge He lamented a visitation uh, of the plague and celebrated the birth of a child to King Charles the First and Queen uh, Henrietta Maria. He also uh, belatedly um, became sympathetic to the successive regimes during the Integrum, that is Puritan Integrum, uh, after Charles the First ex- execution. Uh, which took place uh, on thirtieth uh, uh, January sixteen forty nine. His Horatian Ode uh, is a political poem uh, dated to early sixteen fifty. Responds with sorrow to the regicide, even as it praises Oliver Cromwell's return from Ireland. Marvel's poetry is often witty. and full of um, elaborate concepts in the elegant style of the metaphysical poets many poems are um, inspired by events of the time um, public or any personal events that has happened okay so um, what we see he see in his over we see that marvel wrote many political and religious satires like um, clarendon's house war warming 
um, the statue in stocks market and um, loyal scott but it is a pastoral uh, lyricist and metaphysical love poet that he has earned um, his place in the history of english literature he is mainly known as the metaphysical poet the best of his individual poems are the definition of love um, the garden as i said before also um, a dialogue between the soul and the body um, the nymph complaining for the death uh, of her fawn and of course as i said before also uh, the the coy mistress to his coy mistress okay um he was deeply impressed and um, influenced by uh, dance outlook on life and love and his wonderful conceits um the essence of which he digested and used uh, in his own way in combination with varied knowledge of his vast reading of classical literature dance superiority as metaphysical poet um both amorous and religious is beyond question over here but it must be admitted that so far as metaphysical secular poetry is concerned um marvel is the only poet who comes nearest uh, to brushing shoulder with john dun okay so if we uh, consider um to his coim mistress um to his coim mistress is a witty metaphysical poem which was written by the british author uh, and statesman andrew marvel um either during or just before the integrum okay uh, puritan integrum that is Uh, Marvel probably wrote the poem prior to serving in Oliver Cromwell's government as a minister. Um, the poem was not published in his lifetime. Even T. S. Eliot refers to to his coy mistress in the um, famous poem in his famous poem, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Okay, so in this poem. Um, the speaker of the poem addresses a woman who, who has been slow to respond to sexual advances and uh, we see that the lover um, applies logic in persuading his coy mistress to respond um, to the youthful desire of sexual union so you know the meaning of coy i say i guess coy means um, who is bashful okay so he does not uh, make a sentimental approach uh, or takes recourse to any violent outburst of passion very coolly he tells the shy young lady that the situation must be seen in a practical manner okay the lover could have waited uh, long before proposing sexual intercourse and would um, uh, have gone through ages of protracted um, courtship first singing sad songs of complaint and then praising hyperbolically and endlessly uh, every item of the lady's physical uh, beauty he really loves her uh and uh thinks she deserves all the praise that love poets have recommended but for him the fact is uh, in this transitory life of the material world youth is so brief and beauty is um, like bubbles on the water surface time is flying so fast uh, to catch them up and devour them Uh, and once their youth or for that matter their life is dead where will there be any opportunity to satisfy passion so he is just uh, applying logic in order to express his love 
and also to ask for the sexual union if the uh, lady hesitates um, out of coyness um, all her life uh, for fear of people's comments people's ideas she will not find any lover uh, approach her in her grave however safe or private as he says uh, private that place may be in fact her virginal chastity would be useless because worms will only rape her they will take her uh, chastity worms will only uh, take her chastity beyond this uh, human life it is all blank and frighteningly barren this is what is uh, imposed by the the poet or the speaker or the lover what you say it is therefore uh, foolish not to enjoy love the highest pleasure of youth when it is time to do so okay that is the logic used by the lover the most reasonable thing is to engage in love making um, without wasting a moment and do it passionately and aggressively to get maximum satisfaction out of it only that way lovers can utilize time as far as possible and justify their worth as human beings they cannot prevent the inevitable age and ultimate death um, but um, they should forego their pleasure in anticipation of it because the reward of life is not claimed is lost for if not if not claimed it will be lost forever okay so what we see here is that in the first stanza uh, he describes how he would love her if they had an unlimited amount of time um he could spend centuries admiring each part of her body and her refusal to comply would not um, fade him or disturb him in the second stanza he remembers or make her remember how uh, short human life is once it is over the opportunity to enjoy each other is gone because no one embraces in the grave okay so he is logically applying it applying his motive applying his uh, wishes through logical implementation of it okay in the last stanza the speaker urges the woman to comply arguing that in loving each other uh, with fervor um they will make the most of the short time they have uh, to live okay this is how the love love poetry is spoken about this is how the metaphysical love poetry is spoken or dealt with or uh, described which is in a way secular okay and what we see here also uh, that throughout this poem several themes which are present in this um, poetry is a representation of uh, the society's um, religious or political changes that were occurring okay so um, the structure of the poem if we look into the structure of the poem uh, the poem is written in iambic tetrameter and rhymes the poem rhymes in couplets okay the first stanza um, is 10 couplets long the second um, is 6 and the third is 7 okay so but what we see here is that the most important theme in the poem uh, is the theme of carpe diem so what do you mean by carpe diem 
carpe diem means seize the day okay seize the day it means seize the day clear so uh, we will discuss the themes uh, over here now so what we see here is that this poem is constantly uh, focusing on the ideas described or the ideas of the um, time that was um, the time in which it was written um, during the 17th century many religious and political changes occurred uh, cavalier poetry uh, erupted uh, using themes such as love war uh, loyalty to the king and carpe diem marvel speaks of his prudish mistress in um, to his co to his coy mistress uh, in this attempt herrick uh, attempts to persuade corina to seize the day in corina's going amen okay uh, similarly sir john suckling speaks to his friend to convince him to forget his love in why so pale and wan uh, loveless speaks to his uh, lovers about the limitation placed on on relationships and the need to seize the day uh, in to lucasta and to althea all of these poets all of these poets uh, emphasize carpe diem which means seize the day marvel loveless uh, suckling and herrick use the theme of carpe diem uh, to convey the importance of living in the moment okay so not uh, just be platonic not just be giving up to the time just to seize the moment seize the day live life to the fullest in to his coy mistress uh, marvel uses the theme Uh, carpe diem to convince his mistress to love him now and not wait forever okay uh, marvel pleads with his mistress to stop playing uh, hard to get type and love while she is uh, still young and pretty um, if i quote uh, the now therefore while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew um do, 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 now let us sport us while we may and now like amorous birds of prey unquote okay so this is exactly what a loveless did in his poem okay so there is the carpe diem theme in loveless's poem also um he writes to his lovers to tell uh, them how he lives in the moment he continues to enjoy life even in prison and love his mistress in the poem to althea which is also a poem on carpe diem theme to his coy mistress presents a familiar theme in literature carpe diem um which i said which means seize the day a term um which is coined by ancient roman poet quintus horatius flaccus quintus q u i n t u s horatius uh, or horatius h o r a t i u s flaccus f l a c c u s okay so um, whom we know as whom is whom we know um, more evidently as horace okay it was coined by him so um what we see here is that um in response to the young man's declaration of love for a young lady the lady is playfully hesitant artfully demure um but dallying will not do uh, he says for youth passes swiftly he and the lady must take Uh, advantage of the moment of youth he says and uh, sports uh, and they should sport as for the time being as they can do now okay 
they would spend their day in uh, they could have uh, spent their day in ideal pursuits uh, leisurely passing time or whatever um, but the uh, young man heaps praise on the young lady uh, but they do not have the luxury of time as he says um, as he says and i quote uh, time swinged chariot okay which is racing uh, behind them uh, before they know it their youth will be gone and they will be in their graves and they won't be able to uh, they won't be able to love each other and so uh, the poet pleads his case to seize the day to seize the moment to love each other okay uh um, the poet begins harping on the theme of the time by saying by saying in the very first line had we but world enough and time this coyness lady were no crime okay so what we see here is that he uses the words he uses the words in such a way where uh, he does not blame the lady he does not uh, try to accuse her um, but very logically and very skillfully tries to persuade her by showing the practical implications of uh, the society practical implications of uh, not following what is happening over here okay if we consider the title of the poem uh, we can always see that metaphysical poets always use unusual titles for their poems like uh, dan used the dramatic title good morrow or better thou my heart or canonization uh, in a similar way marvel um andrew marvel to uses an unusual title uh, for his poem to startle the readers to engage the readers who are used to read uh, um read the serious love poems of petrarch and school uh, seriousness is marvel's uh, love poem is mingled with levity okay so the seriousness of love is also mingled with the levity of the theme or the levity of the approach um if we look into the matter um the title uh, of the poem it shows that um as if the author has uh, looked over the shoulder of young man as he wrote or a plea to a young lady or if we can look further that the author then reported the plea exactly as the young man expressed it okay however the author added the title using uh, the third person possessive pronoun his uh, to refer the young man the word coy uh, tells the reader that the lady is no easy catch okay um, the word mistress can mean um, lady manager caretaker courtesan sweetheart and lover it can be anything it can also serve as a female equivalent of master okay so in his uh, in the poem to his coy mistress the word appears to be a synonym Uh, for lady um, or sweetheart in reality of course marvel wrote the entire poem but it is shown as if a lover is speaking to her beloved or her mistress or her um, sweetheart what you uh, whatever you can say um, what we see here is that this third person this third person possessive pronoun he is uh, makes the actual poet andrew marvel aloof from the whole scene okay what does this do 
this gives a sense of reality this gives a sense of reality to the whole poem as if a real poet is showing her showing his love to his beloved okay that is what is all about whereas the poet is actually present who is actually writing but appears as if the poet is absent over here the poet self is absent okay um but when we look into the poem when we look into the poem there are startling comparisons or contrast of metaphysical quality to a concrete where the spiritual or the transcendental you can say uh, with the physical tangible is present tangible object is present uh, into his chemistries for example marvel compares uh, love to a uh, vegetable in a metaphor another metaphysical feature is the mockery of the idealized romantic poetry uh, through the crude and shocking imagery uh, in lines um, uh, 27 and 28 i think the worm shall try thy that long preserved virginity okay irony is produced by gross exaggeration or um, in rhetoric what you can say as hyperbole in line 15 200 years to add or each breast um, this is just hyperbole okay um, so um, what we see here is that there is a constant uh, dramatic suspense um, which is being created uh, by the poet throughout the poem although andrew marvel writes uh, to his chemistress in first person point of view he represents the poem as a plea of another man who is of course fictional uh, the poet enters the mind of the man and reports his thoughts as they manifest themselves okay the young man can be seen here as impatient desperately so um, unwilling to tolerate um, the temperament of the uh, lady um, his motivation appears to be carnal desire rather than uh, so called romantic uh, love platonic love uh, what we see here is that passion rules him consequently um, one may describe him as immature and selfish Uh, the immediacy of the poem consists in the use of the setting uh, the poem uh, does not present a scene in a specific place in which people interact however the young man and the um, young lady uh, presumably live somewhere in inland okay which is a native of the author perhaps in the northeastern england uh, near the river humber uh, the poet mentions the river humber in line 7 okay so as i as i was talking of the talking about the title also the very title suggests the metaphysical uh, features uh, there is uh, the directness of approach when the author looked over the shoulder of the young man as he as if he wrote the poetry through it um using third person possessive uh, pronoun his um what we see here is that uh, into his chemistries the word appears as a lady as a love or the sweetheart uh, there is experimentation in the rhyme and meter in the poem okay the poem is iambic tetrameter with eight syllables okay uh, per line that is eight syllables uh, per line each foot consists of unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable and so such pairings of uh, rhyming lines are called couplets where the last syllable matches okay the last syllable of line 1 rhymes with the last syllable of uh, line 2 
the last syllable of line, line 3 uh, rhymes with the last syllable of uh, line 4 and so on okay so the this is called uh, the couplet so this is more or less the overview of the poem uh, on, on the themes of the poem the main theme is the carpe diem as i talked um, so um, we let's begin with the poem um, the poem will be explained line by line the explanation will be given in another video lesson okay thank you